Welcome to Star Wars Lore with Idiots, the show where a group of grown men attempt to unravel the mysteries of the Star Wars universe. However, the idiot's interpretation of the phrase, unlearn what you have learned, seems to involve learning the same thing over and over again. Seems appropriate. And welcome back to another edition of Star Wars Lore with Idiots, where yours truly, Ranger J1999, tries to teach a bunch of idiots Star Wars lore, and it usually goes to hell in a handbasket. Glad to have you guys here. We record these every Sunday, and then uh, we will get these out to our Patreons and VIPs, usually on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, depending on the time I have to get it out there, but they do get it early, so if you'd like to support the stuff that we're doing with the lore video... Well, why don't you become a patron? Five dollars a bunch, uh, uh, five dollars a, a month or more, and you can help support the content that we're putting out. Not just with this, but all the other great content that we're putting out there on Reality Skewed Gamers. Uh, and the other note before I introduce the idiots is uh, uh, August fifth on Twitch, uh, we will be doing our twenty-four hour stream to kick off our twenty twenty-three campaign for the American Cancer Society. We're partnering with them as Gamers versus Cancer. Um, and, um, we try to raise about $20,000 a year for each campaign. We've done that consistently for the last four or five years. Um, and so if you'd like to support us, mark it down your calendar. We're going to be playing all kinds of fun games that day and streaming all day and night and just raising as much money as possible. Cause that's what we do. That being said, the way this works is we're going to do a topic, uh, that these guys may or may not know. I'll try to give them some clues in the beginning to see if they can guess it. If not, then it doesn't matter. And then we're just going to have a nice little discussion. And hopefully this uh, tickles your fancy about lore and makes you want to go look at more. I usually just cover the general stuff. I don't get into the minutia details. Someday we'll get to that point, but those days are not yet. Those days are not yet upon us. So with that being said, let's introduce the idiots. The first one is Karth, who's... Looking like he hasn't had enough coffee today. No, I have not had enough coffee today. I'm on my third cup currently, oh. and I still feel like I'm in the in the in the black in the red. Yeah, in oh, the red. Okay, so not enough, not enough go-go juice. A few more um, cups. A few more cups. Got it. Yeah, it was it was an interesting weekend. Lots of lots of things going on, so it's kind of just been busy. And so I was like, ah, I did not sleep well. So. Well, the last couple of weekends have not been that great for me for recording. We are a few weeks behind, but I kind of let everybody know that I was in Vegas. And then last weekend I got food poisoning and that was really bad because I literally, if I wasn't in bed, I was on the toilet and that was in my, my life for about two days straight. Um, so not the best way conducive to, uh, uh, recording a lore video would be kind of bad every 20 minutes we were recording this i have to get up and go spend 10 minutes with the <laughs> that would have looked good not Lots a good look for cuts. yeah not a good yeah not a good look uh our, just as a, a note uh cashmere can make it today but he'll be back next week hopefully uh you know life busy busy life kids wife that kind of thing so uh but someone who has joined us we've got uh casper the friendly ghost himself ram bam zero zero one the navy's finest is joining us I uh, I decided to uh, not destroy y'all's eyes with my uh, blinding legs. Today. You did plenty of that on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people wanted a refund, like, but you haven't spent any money, but we want a refund anyway. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, it was pretty. There was a lot of blinding action on the Friday night, behind you. And you can check out me and Ram. On Tuesdays, we do Star Wars The Old Republic, and then Fridays, we alternate um, doing the pre-Hindy stream, and then uh, Wednesday, uh, we get, we're having Ram on for the news, and, and we're covering the news. Wednesdays, you should check it out. We start with Arshi. We're just going to do the news from now on, and then we're going to raid over to Ram's channel, because nobody cares about my GAC, Ram. They want to see you rage. So we'll cover the news. <laughs> we'll be professional somewhat, and then we'll go and... Uh, We'll go raid your channel so well, people was, see if you can get me angry. There was a there was a good bit of rage the the a couple GACs ago. The yeah, last Wednesday. you never know um, when the raid is going to happen. You Definitely. never know, and that yeah. that's that's always the fun that's part. What is, makes uh, it, yes, that's what makes. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it's it's unpredictable. Yes, you know, you may think I'm going to rage and I don't, and then you may be like, oh, that's the easiest team in the world, and I just get pissed off and I throw a temper tantrum. So you know. Yeah. I mean, if you want to guarantee the rage, <laughs> just don't eat before GAC. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'll tell you one thing: nothing puts me on tilt faster in this <laughs> playing this game than playing it hungry. I, I mean, if you want to watch me rage, just just let me do TW. Just put Tuscans and Zori in the front wall, and Ram will lose. You're his guaranteed shit. a victory. 
You're guaranteed yeah. a victory. I, I, I threw uh, my, my guild probably hates me, but we ended up winning anyway, so screw it. Uh, I uh, they wanted me to do some attacks to get some attack banners on the wall. I'm like, all right, well, you know, I don't normally attack, but okay, I'll do it. Uh, so there was a JMK team, and I proceed to throw three GLs plus a gas plus an Afra, and I think like one other team, and I ended up clearing it after like seven battles. I was like, this team's going down. That's right, man. Was he's not a quitter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean sure so anyway let's move on to the topic so what we're going to do is here I'm going to read a quote we're going to see if these two buffoons can guess it uh, the only person that has ever got a quote right is the lovely Kate Gaming who was unable to join us as well today she's got a uh, birthday party to go to so hope she's having fun we'll have Kate back on soon very soon and I am also have a ladies night uh, plans uh, here uh, very soon for you guys as well. So we'll have a lot of fun stuff for the Lord of the Series coming up. All right. Your quote, gentlemen. The line between the life I want to live and the life I'm expected to live is about as, as thin as a hut after a buffet. Let me read that again. The line between the life I want to live and the life I'm expected to live is about as thin as a hut after a buffet. That mull that over, let it marinate your oh. brain matter a little bit. Uh, we'll go to Carthaginicus here, who's thinking hard. Uh, it looks like he's about to have a conniption fit. <laughs> I'm just, you... I'm trying to think. Like it's, it seems like a a character that would be like they, they're some sort of royalty and they don't want to be. But I, I can't think of it. I can't think of any characters that we haven't already covered that would fit that description so i'm just like blanking entirely um i'm gonna go with padme just for padme okay the dark okay good guess good guess i'm not gonna tell you if it's right yet because we want to go to ramban 001 and get his uh get his answer on this he already knows the rules so if he breaks them i'm just gonna immediately cut him off and we'll move on all right ram you've heard the quote I've read it twice what do you think is today's subject padme was Car uh, car uh, can I get that used in a sentence, please? I just did use it in a <laughs> sentence. That's how stupid you are. Uh, well, I got to go with my uh, my my first answer, and I I believe it's it's gonna be right. Uh, I do think it's gonna be Attila the Hut. <laughs> uh... I mean, so you said you said hut after a buffet. That means I did say that. Yeah. All right. So yeah. you went to immediately no. to a actual hut. Okay. That's your final answer. Final answer. No, it's wrong. Uh, damn it. Actually, Karth, you were pretty close. You were pretty damn close, Karth. It's not Padme. It's Leia. Today we're gonna be. Ah, uh, I was. I was in the bloodline. You I was were in the, in bloodline. the bloodline. Yeah, that was about the closest you've ever been. So. The reason I'm covering Leia today is we've got GL Leia and Star Wars Galaxy Heroes coming about soon, and we haven't really touched on her too much. And last time we did a lore video, we covered Luke, but we covered the Legends version of Luke as versus what's currently canon with Luke, and it was a big drastic difference. And I was thinking about, I'm like, you know what? Let's cover Leia versus canon versus what's in the legends books and i thought that would be a pretty good um pretty good uh snapshot of the difference uh from the books and stuff in her story arc than uh what's in currently the star wars canon so that being said ram karth pretty familiar with leia and the legends i'm, I'm hoping so somewhat Ooh, legends leia i'm familiar with some of it um but not as much as I am with Luke, um, just because, you know, yeah. she's not as 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 in the forefront. Oh, she's in the, most of the forefront of the books. But I mean, if you're not really paying attention to her arcs as much as you are Luke's, then yeah, she did yeah. have a lot of books that were just her and Han and other things. So, what about you, Ram? Uh, I know she became a Jedi, and then she popped out a couple of powerful kids, and well, not and that somewhere along order, the timeline but... she died. And, no, she uh, didn't die. She didn't die. She did die. Not in the not in the current Legends saga, and they never got to her death. So, um, oh, this is only Legends. 
yes. Legends, not not, yeah. not canon. Yeah, so let's talk about everything in canon. We know she's born of Padme and Anakin. We know that whole story. She's raised by Bail Organa and his wife, who's the queen of Alderaan. We saw that in the Kenobi series. Um, she's raised up. She becomes a senator at a very young age. We saw her in the Rebels episode where she does some work with uh, the Ghost crew. Um, and then we see her... There's some stuff in the comics and things of that nature, but she's all about the rebellion. Uh, then we get into episode four, five, and six. All that transpires. Everything happens. So pretty much congruity through the timeline, even in Legends, pretty much at that point is the same. Then we get to the sequels where we see that Leia and Han, after having been um, in the in the canon timeline with the way that they've done it, Leia was trained by Luke to become a Jedi, but then she's pregnant with Ben, and then she decides to have the baby, and then you know she goes. Ben becomes goes to Luke eventually, but then he turns to the dark side, and her and Han have this big breakup, and we see everything that happens in the sequels where she ends up training Rey and everything like that. So that's pretty much Leia's story in the current canon timeline. There's some other stuff uh, in there. There was a book that was done for her between um, episode six and seven that does some of her story arc. I can't remember the name, exact name of the book, but there's been so many books out there that I can't remember every title um, that gets into some of that stuff. There's some stuff in the comics that kind of flesh out her character a little bit, but really different than Legends. <laughs> oh, massive, massively massive different from Legends. difference from her in the what happens with her in the Legends and what we have going on here. Um, we so after Return of the Jedi, um, she becomes pretty much a politician. She actually becomes Minister of State for the New Republic uh, under Mon Mothma. And she does that for a while. There's a whole book series called The Courtship of Leia where she has another suitor and it's Han, but she ends up picking Han. And they do get married and they have three children. And we'll talk about them here uh, in a bit. Uh, but uh, the first two were Jaina and Jason Solo. Um, and then their third child, which was Anakin Solo. And we've talked about them a little bit in the Vong Wars, but we'll talk about them here. Um, during that time, she first decides that her first duty is to the New Republic. She actually becomes the Supreme Chancellor. She actually serves two terms as the Chancellor of the, of the New Republic. Um, and she does that. Now, after that, there's some... After she's done that, she retires from politics. Her kids get older, and they're actually training. Leith decides that she's going to get trained to become a Jedi. And so um, she was trained... To the status of Jedi, of Jedi Knight uh, as a Jedi Knight, I don't think she ever got master status. I don't think she ever cared about it, but she did get become a Jedi Knight. Um, she was trained by Luke, of course, but her main uh, teacher, who she really respected and uh, relied on, uh, was Jedi Master Saba Sabatine, uh, a Mon Calamarian, I believe. She was a Mon Calamarian. Uh, and she, um, after a conflict called the Swarm War, she knighted her as uh, a jedi knight um so comes really involved with the jedi as is her family then come the vong okay the vong come in and this is where things change drastically for the solo family they'd had conflict at this time then in the books there's been different little wars and stuff everything that goes on stuff with her kids you know the new jedi order and stuff there's stories there i'm not going to get into that but the Vong invade, they all take action. During the Vong War, things happen to what I call the Solo family. Chewie dies almost immediately in the books. Then halfway through the saga, um, Anakin dies. And then further along, Jason gets captured and tortured. Um, and then, um, so yeah, this sets Han and Leia into full battle mode. Uh, during the Vong Wars, they even team up with Boba Fett at one time. They are constantly fighting, doing whatever they need to do. 
to help win uh and they do and um but puts a strain on han and leia i mean actually han be actually put on his general stripes and came back in to fight you know for this so after this a lot of grief jason goes off on a pilgrimage in the force uh to kind of find himself especially after everything he went through jana goes and gets involved with i think baron fell is his name uh, but she becomes like a new hero for the new republic han and leia kind of just go on a chill mode for a little bit you know just spending time with themselves they spend some time with luke kind of you know refining themselves and kind of grieving for the loss of you know anakin then jason comes back and they're very happy like oh boy okay our son's back and you know he's healed and this will be great and unfortunately that's not the case because as I, we discussed uh previously jason becomes darth Cadus. he kills mary jade he becomes a new lord of the sith he starts the second galactic civil war um and han and leia decide that they are going to take him out and the reason is they felt like their son was dead to them he was dead uh, yeah. after killing mary jade and everything else and trying to correct ben and you know um they made the decision, but they weren't strong enough. As powerful as Leia is, she was not stronger than her son. And that's why Luke tried, but he didn't have it in him really to kill Jason. Uh, it came down to Jaina, who uh, we will get into her story arc, but she goes to Boba Fett, becomes a Mandalorian, gets the armor, learns their ways of fighting, and incorporates that into her Jedi training. And then she goes and faces her brother and kills him. Um, and so... In the aftermath of their son's death, um, what they didn't know at the time, but later find out that Jason had had a um, a relationship with Tenel Kaw of Hapes, who's the queen of that sector, and they have a a, da a, a daughter, and her name is uh, Alana, and um, because of who her father was, they keep it a secret, and she doesn't want her in hapes just because of who jason is and just because of the political structure that's going on in that time with all the conflict um plus we have at this time what's happening too is we talked about it in the luke episode chief of state uh the uh, dala uh that we talked about that was against the jedi and stuff was yeah. doing her thing and Leia tried to talk sense into her she wasn't having it and they're just looking at the situation so they decide that you know they're just gonna be good crane parents and they're gonna raise Alana, so they go on adventures. They take the, the take her, and she gets one of those cats from uh, Episode Two, uh, the Reek kind of cat. Uh, is that the, the Reek or what's the no? What's the name of the the cat creature? Not the Reek. The uh, uh, Nexu. The Nexu. Nexu. They get her a little Nexu, and she's strong in the forest, and she has strong uh, bonds with animals, and so she's running around this little girl, <laughs> this, 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 this monster kitty that like guards and loves her and protects her and stuff. It's actually really cool. Um, and then we have the whole thing with the Avalos situation. They get involved with that, but not too much because their priority is to let Luke and Ben and all the Jedi handle that. Um, their main priority through the rest of the sagas is to protect uh, their granddaughter. And that's the only thing that they're going to do. And people come after her and not a good choice when you're going against Han and Leia. Because what's really cool about Han and Leia is that because of leia's positions she's got tons of political context she has tons of other kind of context especially with their friendship with lando who is a quadrillionaire at this time um <laughs> they have resources out the yin yang they just fly around the falcon and they've got havens set up everywhere and they've got unlimited funds so they just go around hiding out and just taking uh their granddaughter on little trips um so that's in the general sense the legend story of Leia. However, you really should read these books and stuff on her because just as we discussed with Luke, she's a fascinating character and her arc is phenomenal just like Luke's is because she goes through just as much turmoil as Luke uh, and her family as he does, right? They're, you know, and they're both twins too. Um, you know, so um, I love Leia's relationship with Luke um they're very close um and just the, the whole dynamic the best parts of the books when you read them is just the relationship between han and leia you can tell that they love each other 
very much. But Lei doesn't put up with his shit, and he doesn't put up with her shit too, which is really great. Like they'll call <laughs> each other out. Um, but um, it's really fascinating, and seeing Lei operate as the Chancellor has released some really awesome raids. Um, seeing her training as a Jedi and some awesome raids. The stuff that happens with the Vong and their kids. It's just heartbreaking. Um, and what Leia and both Han and Leia go through. And they didn't wallow in their, in their, 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 their pain. They used it to become ruthless. And I mean ruthless. They went after the Vong in the books. I mean, they were... They got involved because they wanted to retire. I mean, they wanted before the Vong evaded, they'd had some conflicts. But at that point, Han and Leia were like, you know, we got our kids. Let's just enjoy our kids and stuff. You know, um, you know, the thing that was really nice to see in the books is that when Jaina does get bar married to Baron Fell, you know, to see Han and Leia, to actually get to do something like that because Jason had died. Anakin had died, so they only had Jaina left, and so Han was able to give her away and all that stuff that you see in the books, and that was really cool. Um, and Alana, you know, and the the books, uh, their relationship with Alana is fantastic. They're they're adults and grandparents, you know. I think Leia's more the disciplinary, and Han's more like you know the the grandfather that's always giving her candy and stuff. <laughs> <You know? laughs> he's like teaching her the shit he she shouldn't be doing because she'll ask him questions about me, you know, smuggling, and all this other stuff. He's he's like, yeah, it's really good, you know. Well, you can do this. And Leia's over there, just like, stop telling her that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's really fascinating stuff. And like we did last week, and Ram, I'm going to get you and Karth now involved with this. That's just the general stuff. Um, some of this you guys may know, and some of you guys may not know. There's then there's a lot of stuff I'm leaving out here, but um, the heir, heir to the empire story and everything, uh, her her involvement. There's so many little things that she's involved with throughout the books and stuff that she does. But it really is a contrast to what we got in the sequel trilogy. You know, I mean, it's just it was like night and day. I mean, the Leia that we had in the Legends book was this powerful mother and woman that. Um, leads the galaxy is humble but forthright you know like she is in the you know it's the 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 original trilogy um she never changes that but you know just her priorities of like who she's trying to take care of is always yeah. responsible always noble um but she's a fighter for sure in the book she definitely gets gets down and dirty along with han in the books but i don't know it's the way we got in the sequel trilogy, I mean, I think it's just another missed opportunity like Luke. But what are your guys' thoughts hearing what we have from Legends as compared to what we have um, now? Well, I think in the short run of it is that a, a lot of what they did in the, in the canon version of Leia, I feel like is a missed opportunity for a lot of ways to develop the character. And they just feel like it's a very unapologetic way of, of progressing a character. They wanted certain things to happen that kind of defied where like episode six left off, like certain relationships and their whole like explanation of it was, well, because of time and space, you know, now things are different. And it's just like, while true, it'd be cool if we had some like some developmental things that explain why that was the case versus just, well, because narratively, we don't like the fact that this happened in canon or not in canon, but in um, the EU stuff. And so we don't want to we don't want to have that. It's just like, well, poopy on you <laughs> like that's silly. Um, but I don't know. I think for a lot of it is that she's a. I think the the EU version of her is just a much stronger character. It's a much more well fleshed out character. It's much more realistic of how things would have gone. Um, you know, it's it's a it's a better story for what it was because it keeps relatively intact the identities of the characters that we had from the original trilogy. You know, you know, we no one expected Han and Leia to have a perfect flawless marriage, but no. you know to but to know that you know it for for things to fall apart the way that in the in the canon version it just feels really cheap yeah. you know it's like oh well it just didn't work out because han you know went back to his old ways and i'm like eh, i don't think so i don't and i don't think leia would have thrown on the towel so simply so like there's just a lot of things about that that i don't care about 
And then the fact that they kind of rewrote a lot of like, you know, they only had one kid and then that went to hell. And so like they kept parts of the tropes the same and then and then other parts went differently. Um, and then they just kind of did this never nonstop like, well, you know, all the characters she used to love. Well, now they're dead. So yeah. I feel like we don't get enough time with them in the in the new EU stuff or the canon stuff to actually appreciate the older characters. I feel like a lot of that just gets thrown to the wayside of like, I think they really did the old characters dirty, you know? Yeah. I mean, they, they, they brought them back for recognition sake and that was it. And, yeah. and I feel like if that's all you're going to do and then you're going to immediately kill off the characters, you shouldn't have brought them back in the first place. I know, I know for a large portion, the reason why Han died in the first episode was because he wanted out. Yeah, here's of course but, I'll do one, but that's about it. Yeah, yeah, it, it was his thing. Is that you have to kill my character, and which I mean they could have written him out in a thousand different ways where he doesn't have to die. But I mean, well, even if he died, they could have so. they could have been where Han and Leia are together, and they're trying to figure yeah. out what to do for Ben. And Han goes to try to save Ben because he still believes. And then I think his death would have been even more impactful than it was. In, in the sequel yeah. trilogy and, uh, and the unfortunate part of, with leia of course that she has to she passed away because the actress you know carrie fisher passed during the filming and so they kind of had to do this yeah you know well we don't we don't want to get rid of her but we don't want to like we can't really do much because she can't record any lines or scenes or anything like that so they were very limited as to what they could do um with the character and you know it's fine but it's just i feel like the um the downside of bringing characters back after that, that much of a swath of time is that you have an idea of how things should have gone, and then you're walking in on somebody's reimagining of 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 that story. And so yeah. I think it really cheapens the overall uh, experience with these uh, original trilogy characters that um, really kind of misses a lot of opportunities of what um, those characters were capable of. Like, is even with the I don't know if you've ever played the Battlefront Two um yeah. campaign yeah the um they did a decent job in that one of Love explaining leia. what what of, of leia and han and those characters it's like you know they did a decent job of kind of explaining where things are going and what was happening and 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 how they all kind of had these different lives and it felt a little bit more organic than the story that we ended up with in, in the new trilogy set so yeah i mean ran. i'm Let's get Ram in here. Ram, your thoughts. You've heard the EU version, and I know you're a giant fan of the sequel version, so have at it. Have at you, mate. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I love the sequel trilogy. It's it's so well thought out, and just, like, the fact that they had everybody get into a room and, like, had everything laid out, and they knew exactly what they were going to do throughout the entire trilogy, uh, <laughs> more so than even George Lucas knew what he was going to do with the original and, and prequel trilogy. Like, mm. that, that was just amazing. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, Leia... Here, it Leia, seems like I watched a different, Leia, different movie. Uh, well, I mean, you know, I mean, who doesn't who doesn't want a reenactment of, uh, of Mary Poppins in space? You know, like, I mean, that was just awesome. That was showcasing Leia's powers of, like, I'm more powerful than everybody, including my brother... And, uh, you know, yeah. And then somehow she can survive in space for a little bit. And that, that I mean, that was so well thought out. Um, you know, but why, why would anybody want to see how Leia was in Legends with how powerful she was and how badass she was and how much kick ass she did versus what we got in the sequels? Like, the sequels are clearly better. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> now that we know that that's not true, tell us what you really think, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, putting aside the untimely death of obviously Carrie Fisher and and you know them not being able to do too much, she she was rumored to have a lot bigger role in the sequel trilogy than what she had, and that was just due to her death, unfortunately. Yeah, nothing you can do about that. That's that's part of life. But um, I mean, laying the laying legends. As with pretty much everybody else in Legends, uh, is just so much better and so much more badass than what we actually got in the sequel trilogy. Um, they are, I mean, I would have loved to see some of the stuff that, that they came up with. Um, you know, Ben, I think, was based semi based off of like pretty closely, who, who yeah, to Jason, Jason and then, uh, yeah, Jason and Anakin uh, or whatever, right? So mainly Jason, yeah, Anakin was a totally yeah. different kind of style of character. We'll eventually cover the three. Uh, their, the three kids just to flesh out their stories because there's a lot there um but yeah um it, it does like Jason would have been more badass though 
Oh, Darth Cadiz. Jason was <laughs> phenomenal. And you, you know, the cool thing about Jason is that when you read the, when you read those books, you're on Jason's side. You, because of everything he's gone through and everything that he's done and sacrifice and that's happened to him, he's being, it makes total sense why he falls to the dark side. You know, and it wasn't like he just fell to the dark side easily. He just, it was a long progression um, in his journey and just looking at everything like, you know. Counterintuitive to hell. Yeah. Ben fell. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I had a bad dream. My uncle, my, my uncle attacked me and then I decided that I wanted to be more like my great grandfather. <laughs> yeah. My grandfather. Yeah. I mean, we could just leave out the fact that, you know, that made no sense because, you know, Luke, Luke won the entire trilogy. You know, like, I could save my father, even though he's the most evil man in the world. By the way, I have a bad dream about my nephew. Let me kill him. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm totally buying that. Yeah. Jason was literally physically and mentally tortured and then went through all this stuff. But I mean, to tell you how of a journey when he, he met Abloth, like, join me. I'll give you unlimited power. He told her to get bent. He thought his grandfather was, it's like, yeah, my grandfather was powerful, but man, did he make some stupid mistakes, you know? And yeah. um, he, he was, with everything he'd been through and everything that had been going on in the galaxy, he's like, okay, what we are doing right now is not working. And if I need to go to the dark side to fix this crap, then I'm going to do it. That was his main motivation, right? Because he is tired of just the way things were set up. He was tired of the New Republic. He was tired of the Jedi uh and the way they were kind of going about things um they just weren't taking action enough he was really frustrated with them throughout because he felt they needed to be more proactive than reactive and so when he was offered the path to become the new dark lord of the sith he i mean he really thought about it, it was not like he just said oh that sounds great you know you <laughs> in the books they really plays it out with this conversation with what's her name and i can't i don't have in front of me i'm worse with names but he really goes back and forth and they have this debate and then finally it's like you know what you make a lot of sense and kind of lines up with how i'm feeling so yeah and then he was like let's do this you know if i'm going in i'm going in all the way you know and i'm going to kind of like darth Revan's like you know i gotta do something here what's working is not working you know the hubris of both those characters, though, is that they thought that they could, you know, without fully studying, master being you know, the master of the dark side as it corrupts them, right? Yeah, um, the it was the it was the corrupting force behind it, and part of what ended up happening. Well, because the, that's the thing with like dark side relics is that they, and that's the what I love about um, the uh, the Swotor stuff is they really go into how like a lot of the Sith Lords had their essences tied to their artifacts. Yeah. So they're like, and they actually did, um, they did a good job of that in the, in the EU too. Like, um, the, the Vader's gauntlet, like the guy who tried to wear Vader's gauntlet, like, it, like it, like it, dec it decays his hand. The longer he wears it, it becomes more and more corrupted and more and more damaged, but it, then he, it's like, he can't get rid of it anymore because now it's like my whole hand's trashed and yeah. I want it. But you know, they, they did a really good job of like, of showing that like the dark side, just like the presence of it corrupts from the, the original uh, host. And so it's like, sometimes you don't recognize you're being influenced um, until it's way too late. But yeah, there's, I really wish they'd gone through more development on, on Leia's backstory in the, in the, in the new Canon stuff, because there was just so much missed opportunities that would really help explain um you know well i would have liked to seen this episode where seven were. where we're not focusing on the new characters they come in later yeah where it's 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 luke it's han and it's leia we start with them and yeah. go on this there's a great series on youtube about how they could have done a the better version of the seven eight eight and nine right and it's totally <laughs> different and i'm just like god why couldn't we've gotten that um because i know you want to introduce the new characters and make them part of it but you know I would have been fine if we had started off as, you know, Leia on Coruscant just chilling, you know, doing yeah. you know, stuff with Han I, there, you know, just coming in with Chewie and they're just, you know, talking about Ben. Ben hasn't even fallen to the dark side yet and talking about how he's out there with Luke and then, you know, whatever, 3 goes there. And then we go to Luke with Ben, you know, doing Jedi things and the Jedi Order still around. 
and then we can get a story of how they run into Ray, and then this starts us, you know, however they wanted to do it, and you could bring yeah. Finn in through that story and Poe and everything else. You know, secretly, Leia has always it, kept the, the resistance up and running just in case because she never trusts the Republic. You know, it could have been a yeah. whole different story with these great characters, and they just—I just feel like they just—the you sit at Pets Carth, they just threw them in. Here's what happened. Yeah. Oh well, and you know, blah blah blah. For the, for the the for the 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 sequel trilogy, the there was there was two ways in my head that it should have played out. Which one was the way you just said, which is basically let's let's get a lot more backstory in the first episode and move and then move into like introducing the big baddie and, and or dealing with it on a smaller conflict of like oh we need to deal with this because they have got a problem that is going to threaten the galaxy kind of thing and, and and slow roll a little bit more yeah. or they should have just dumped all the recognition and jumped you know way out into you know a hundred years after that after the episode events of episode six where you know you can reasonably explain how things are different or have changed or yeah. whatever else or or there's no reason that you would need it because it's it, you know in a galaxy that large it doesn't take a lot of time for someone's historical legacy to kind of fall off of notoriety unless you're a part like like unless you're on Coruscant you probably would never heard of Leia again after you know 20 years after her death. And so I feel like a large portion of of that is they didn't really do a great job distancing or or back telling the story, because like I'm all for Leia being a badass. I love the character. She's a, she's an amazingly uh, well drafted character for what she does. But then they kind of just go all over the road of like, oh, she's really important to well, she can't get anybody to believe in her. And I'm like. Do you realize how dumb this is? Like you're talking about someone who was like at the pinnacle of power inside the New Republic, and she can't find a soul to ally with her in this fight against the First Order, which they have evidence of them doing bad things. I'm like, come on, like, like she's got her little ragtag group of like, like the core rebel people that were there in yeah. the original trilogy that like are with her but she can't convince anybody else like are you saying that somebody was that influential just all of a sudden walks away from it i mean even in the um i think even in the canon stuff she goes back to the imperial the the new republic senate and becomes a part of that yeah i don't know if she becomes the supreme chancellor no, but she has a, a i think she loses the election in the books and stuff so yeah yeah but yeah it's just really it's it, it's an interesting dichotomy between what we got with the legends and I'll, and I'll say this, now the legend books are great, but the overall story arc and the relationships that are built in that overall, I think is what we're mainly emphasizing yeah. here. Um, but yeah, I, I, I encourage you to go back and read these books. They're really, really good. Um, and they really go in a different direction. Um, unless you're like Ram and you just really just love the sequels and that's all you want to watch. <laughs> totally. I mean... I think a large portion of the sequels is like if you have no ties to anything else of what was said about that era of time, I feel like it's not the world's worst story, especially episode seven. Episode seven overall is not the world's worst story. No, it's not bad, but it's not. Eight is by far the most just Dumpster fire. the dumbest thing I think I've ever seen in my life because like it's just so many dumb narrative plots that are like the driving factor of everything where it's like all right kick rocks nine isn't a bad way a bad story either but nine spent so much time trying to fix eight retconning eight but it's like 40 like the first like what 30 minute montage is Philo getting the sith wayfinder to get to exegol to reintroduce palpatine that's like the in the first like 30 45 minutes of the, of the movie and that completely like eviscerates the entire purpose of seven because now Snoke being the big baddie doesn't matter anymore and all these other things. So I feel like, you know, it's just these, these really important characters that are, that were at the pinnacle of the rebellion just get tossed the wayside because we have to spend so much time retelling a story that we told, that we told poorly. Yeah. And so I feel like that's where a lot of the, the original trilogy characters get really, uh, they get really kind of um, misrepresented of what they, of what they could have been or who they really are, because you spend so much time trying to explain how your new villain somehow returned um, <laughs> best writing ever. 
um <laughs> you know <laughs> and it's just things like that but like yeah. i i would wish that they came back a little bit more on you know like kind of like the kenobi series where we get introduced to a young leia i kind of wish we would do like a like a like a live action rebels kind of time frame era thing where yeah. we get a younger leia who is just a defiant yet nosy little prick that just can't help but get her nose in or involved into things because yeah. like it kind of reminds like i don't you ever play the original uh force unleashed game yep where um that one empire guy kidnaps leia yeah. essentially and then you kind of low-key rescue her to get in favor with bail and it's just like this is cool because you you know like from the, like the what we experienced with her this is the kind of shit she'd get into because she wouldn't shut her mouth and she refused to which is which is fantastic but like those kinds of stories were yeah, yeah where she was a little bit more you know yeah she wasn't on the front lines fighting but you know she was yeah. fighting on a different on a different front and um, getting more of that kind of story with her leading that and, and things happening where, you know, she's getting, you know, she's not a prisoner, but she's getting taken to these facilities where she's not allowed to go anywhere. It's like she might as well be a prisoner, you know, it's so things like yeah. that would be a much more interesting story to have kind of unfold with uh, with her if they went back and did something like that. I'd like to see it. Graham, any final thoughts on our uh, our princess, everybody's princess, Princess Leg and Big bucket of wind and rest in peace, Carrie Fisher. Um, any final thoughts on the legends or anything else you want to add to this conversation, Ram Bamis? No, um, yeah, I mean, obviously there's not much we can do about it now. You know, we can't, we kind of can't ever see any more Leia except for if they ever maybe did something like Rogue One. CGI. And even then it'd be such a small role, such yeah. minuscule, and it wouldn't actually be Carrie Fisher. It would just be... I mean, you can do a lot have of crazy to, stuff with AI now, so... They'd have crazy, to recast but... her if they ever wanted to bring her back. Yeah. Which is which is fine. I mean, It's no, not but, the end of the world. No, I would, love, I would actually like to see this or get a couple cameos here, here and there. Um, maybe but in here's, this soap here's series a or something. Here, sure. Here's a thought, right? We did have young Leia... With Viv Vivian Lyra, Lyra Blair, I think was her name, oh. and who I thought played a perfect young Leia. Uh, I am not opposed to them recreating a story of like Leia's childhood or Leia's teenage years or something, and casting her in there as she grows up. That would, would be pretty I would, awesome. I, I would think. be fine with it. Oh, um, well, I mean, even when they recast um, Harrison Ford, well, Han Solo with a, uh, and I can't remember his name either. Alden Eric. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was not a bad rendition. It was it it felt okay, and like I think that's the thing is like you kind of have to separate yourself from. Yeah. If you want more of the story, you have to be okay with some other actor or actress picking up the mantle, and that's fine. You know, just don't make it like glaringly different. You know, try to keep the features as similar as possible with a with a qualified actor or actress. And just stay true to the character. And then just yeah. They're they're playing a character, so as long as they stay true to the character, it shouldn't be that bad. You know, you'll have to get over some of the visual differences at first, but yeah. I mean, I like the solo story. Um, yeah, I, I like the, the role solo. they played. Some yeah. things, you know, you could nitpick here and there, but still, I would love to see them go back to her. You know, well, how young is she? She is quite young in the Empire Strikes Back, isn't she? she oh, no, 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 Strikes Back, the New Hope. She's like. She's Late teens, she's like 18. 19. Yeah, yeah like she's that. the same she's age as Luke. Center, so yeah. yeah, so they're both like so, 19 years old. So, like 19 yeah. or something, yeah. Yeah, so they're pretty young. So I mean, there's not a there's not a ton of room there to uh, to explore a lot of time in between. But you could easily do you could do something. I mean, between like the ages of 16 and 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 when she gets captured or or leading up to that moment yeah, of getting captured. Yeah, they had that moment in Rebels before. where she was she yeah. had a cameo, and I thought that was great. You know, showing her in the background helping the rebellion out. So yeah, and and flawlessly playing off the role of how could you let them steal my ships? Yes, it was so funny. <laughs> Give a little wink, like God, I got you. You know. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, let us know in the comments what you think. Uh, this will be out this week for you guys. It comes out every Friday, the week after the, the Sunday after we record it. So give us your comments on what you think of Leia in the trilogy versus Leia in the in the EU. If you're familiar with it, or 
And if you're not, how interested are you to learn more about Leia and the EU? As I said, they're great books to, from, I mean, just read them. There are some, uh, there's some filler books in there, but I actually kind of liked some of the filler books with Leia and Han because it really gives them their dynamic and their relationship. Even though they may not be doing some stuff, a lot of stuff in the books, in those books. Uh, just for instance, the stuff with Alana, is, I thought was really fun. I really enjoyed uh, their relationship and their adventure and stuff. Um, so, yeah. If you let us know in the comments what you think, but this does goes on YouTube. We have a playlist for it. We also upload it on Amazon and um, Podbean. So you can download it as a podcast and we'll have that up for you guys as well. And that's going to be supported by our Patreon. As I said, become a Patreon, five bucks a month or more you can support it. It'll all be in the link in the description there. So on behalf of myself and the idiots, thank you for joining us today on Star Wars Lower with Idiots. Have a great rest of your day and we will see you soon. Peace out.